Well, as you can see, I've called this um, walk on hot coals. As a, an aside, um, this is the title of a, a song that I particularly liked when I was at university many, many millennia ago uh, by a guy called Rory Gallagher. I put the link below for anybody who's interested who wants to listen to a good bit of guitar work by Rory Gallagher, Walk on Hot Coals. <coughs> Anyway, the um, relevance of it here is that, in a sense, the basic problem of life is a search for significance. And people have written books about this, mostly bullshit, in my opinion. Um, but of course, I might be wrong. But this search for significance uh, causes a lot of problems for human beings. I mean, you know, the essential problem is this. We are all, like all sentient beings, driven to survive. And um, we can see that the Grim Reaper is standing somewhere in the distance. And um, we, we want to feel that we're significant, not just some straw dog, as Lao Tzu said. It's something I've quoted many times. As far as Lao Tzu is concerned, uh, heaven and earth are heartless, treating all things as straw dogs. Something that's used and then thrown into the fire. We don't really want to feel that we are a straw dog. So we start asking questions that um, are essentially driven by ego, by this need for significance. So we will ask questions like, who or what am I? What is my purpose? Is there life beyond the physical body, the death of the physical body? What's the meaning of it all? <clears throat> we ask these questions and never consider for a moment that these questions might all be nonsense. Just the desperate attempts by an ego to establish some kind of significance for itself. You know, of, course, of course, we want someone to say, well, you are significant. You know, God loves you or the universe needs you or uh, the whole of the universe exists so that you can exist and yeah, blah, blah, blah. We all want that kind of significance. Anyway, um, generally speaking, these kind of questions and um, this drive for significance doesn't leave us alone. There are two ways, roughly speaking, that we can address it. One is to look for palliatives. The other one is to walk on hot coals. And I'm going to go through both of them fairly briefly, but um, hopefully you'll get the gist. So, uh, looking for a palliative. Well, we want someone to tell us that we're uh, we have some purpose, that we are significant in the world, that we have some kind of meaning. And the people we normally go to for that uh, are, well, usually spiritual or religious people. We might go to self-help people, people or maybe some psychiatrist or some person like that to tell us that we have some significance. <clears throat> This is palliative. I mean, it's palliative in the sense that you cannot um, validate any of what's said. You know, if somebody says, well, you're significant because God loves you, then you have no means of demonstrating whether that's true or not. I mean, you can believe it. And let me say here that I'm not knocking these things. I'm just saying this is the way it is. I'm not knocking it because a lot of people need these palliatives, just like people need painkillers and um, maybe alcohol or whatever to numb the pain of existence. So these palliative solutions, well, you're, you know, what, what religion or spiritual people might say, um, your significance significant because God loves you, you're significant because you have a special purpose in life, you're significant because you can merge with the one true self. You're significant because you can realize your non-duality and, you know, blah, blah, blah. 
Now, um, I imagine some people here at least might be aware of Zapfer. I can't remember his first name now. It might have been Peter. I can't remember now. The Norwegian guy who wrote uh, The Last Messiah. And he says basically these palliatives work in one of four ways. The first one is, so we're, we're, we're loaded with these questions. Who am I? What's the point of it all? Is it all futile? And so on. The first one is isolation. Well, we get all those nasty questions and we put them in a little box somewhere and pretend they don't exist. And then we get on with going to parties, cocktail parties, dinner parties, or whatever your thing is, going down to the club, going to watch a football match, you know, whatever. We get on with all that stuff and um, put all those nasty questions in a little box. The problem is that the box isn't completely soundproof, so... You can still hear those questions a little bit in the background, which is a bit annoying. But you do your best to ignore them, so you isolate them. The other thing you can do is you can anchor, which is you find something that you have invented that gives your life meaning. So, for example, um, I'm going to be the best heart surgeon in the world, or I'm going to be the richest person in the world, or I'm, you know, some ambition that takes you away from awkward questions or I'm going to study Mr. Gorgeous works for the rest of my life and write really meaningful books about it or I'm going to uh, write books about Christianity you know, anything to take you away from the nagging questions that are basically just a product of your ego your search for significance so that's isolation, anchoring, sublimation. I'm not going to go into the details of these. Sublimation is basically to... Uh, so, for example, if you're a writer and your life is tragic, then you might write about tragedy to, in effect, divert the tragedy into the novel you're writing or something like that. And there's just plain diversion, which is, well, I don't want to think about this nasty stuff. So, you know, I will go to the cinema, I will watch TV all day, I will, you know, whatever. So, um, these these are palliatives. Uh, they work, and one of the problems with modern society is that we've destroyed, to a large extent anyway, some of the more effective palliatives, which are religion, well, which are based around religion. Um, and we have nothing to replace them with, nothing that's satisfying anyway. You know, going to the mall isn't going to uh, replace going to a high mass or something like that and giving people some hope for the future. I mean, hope in truth is a poison. But, as I say, let's not knock it because a lot of people need it. Anyway, so that's the palliative approach. Now, walking on hot coals. <coughs> Um, how many people are going to do this? Well, almost none. Um, it's not a very nice thing to do. Uh, but some people, unfortunately, just won't, how can I put it? They won't drop the bone. They won't stop chewing on that bone until they've chewed through it. No matter how painful it is for their teeth or their mouth, they'll just keep chewing on it until they get some kind of resolution. So, you know, what is the meaning of my life and blah, blah, blah. Well, there are answers to these things. So, um, to walk on hot coals, clearly, is an uncomfortable thing. Uh, so, we strive to understand ourselves and the world. And um, you may know that I wrote a book called A Minority Interest. And I think the strap line is understanding ourselves and the world. It's a minority interest. Very few people want to understand themselves and the, the, themselves in the world because it's not very flattering. We're all self-interested little buggers, basically. And as Schopenhauer pointed out, for most people, I'm not saying everyone, but for most people, if they're given a choice, well, you can either save yourself or you, we, you can save the world. They'll say, well, to hell with the world, save myself. That is the extent of our... Uh, nasty little nature and that's not pretty 
And for example, all these people complaining about, um, <laughs> here's where I offend a lot of people, but I don't care. Um, so for all these people complaining about um, climate change, say, if all of a sudden some large oil company or mining company or something came to them and said, hey, you're just the guy we're looking for or just the woman we're looking for. We'll pay you $5 million a year to be our you know, something or other. Are they going to take that? Probably, yes. I, I don't think everybody would, but a lot of people would. That's what we're like, but we like to flatter ourselves that we're kind, loving people, or anything like that. And, well, there's a digression there which I won't go into, but... Um, so, looking at ourselves in the world is not a particularly pain-free thing. So, most people are not going to do it. To appreciate that you're not the least bit important is not exactly pain-free. So that this search for significance is completely pointless. If you're not the least bit important, if you are a straw dog, then what significance do you have? Well, none. <laughs> so this is walking on hot coals. It's uncomfortable. You know, all the things like, is life um, futile? Well. For an individual life, yes, of course it's futile. Um, you are a decaying thing. You're born kind of perfect and all that happens through life is that you age and you decay and then eventually die. Ideas like purpose, meaning, truth are all human constructs. I doubt that the universe knows anything about purpose, meaning or truth. They're just human constructs that we find useful in our everyday life so purpose i need to drive from here to here there's your purpose you're going there because you want to meet aunt fanny or something um there's your purpose and then we say well the universe works like that well maybe it doesn't maybe the universe knows nothing about purpose and maybe in truth your life has no purpose other than particular little purposes going to meet aunt fanny or getting a better job or something same with meaning the universe has no meaning, it's just a human idea that things should have a meaning. And this is again our search for significance. You know, I must have a meaning, life must have a meaning for me. No, it doesn't, it has no meaning. You're completely free in that respect. The same with truth. Well, you know, there's a long discussion about truth. Science doesn't discover truth, it just, just discovers models models of reality as we see it. They're not truths. It's just all human constructs. Same with morality. So, you know, you could ask, well, is this walking on hot coals? Um, nihilism. No, it isn't nihilism. It's much, much worse than nihilism. We're talking about deconstructing our idea set, our emotions, or our emotional uh, habits, our desires, uh, our habitual sensory reactions, is way worse than nihilism. Because if you look at the definition of nihilism, it basically says something to the effect of someone who has no beliefs. Well, not having any beliefs is easy. You can just see that they're vapor in your head, not much more than that. So you can discard those fairly easily, but discarding your emotional habits and your um, your habitual desires and responses to things is way more difficult. So anyway, this is walking on hot coals. It's um, it's not something most people would want to do. Um, as I say in my book, the um, the uh, I can't remember the title now. Um, a Minority Interest. Yeah, if I'd wanted a book that sold large numbers of copies, I'd have written one about how God loves you or that kind of thing. But I'm not interested in selling large numbers of copies. Yeah, I'm just interested in hitting people who want a bit of, well, the rough stuff, basically. Uh, and there's not many people like that. 
Anyway, <clears throat> what might be the outcome of walking on hot coals? Well, I think the outcome is freedom. And the only freedom worth having is freedom from yourself. Once you're free of yourself, in other words, your habitual thought patterns, your habitual emotions, your habitual desires and so on. Once you're free of all those things, you are free, obviously. There's obviously a bit more to it than that, but that's the gist of it. So anyway, I hope you got the idea there. We can either go seeking for palliatives, and if people need palliatives and they don't want to go walking on hot coals, then that's fine. Um, there are problems with palliatives, but you know, that's another thing. So, if you're interested in walking on hot coals, then just keep listening to these podcasts. <laughs> There'll be plenty of it.